please help me welcome Dr. Heidi Heron. Thank you so much, so much. And you know, it's it's great to be in Colorado. So hello, Denver. Hello, Denver. So I originally am from Denver, but I am in the summer of Sydney, Australia, and this is where I live at the moment. And it's absolutely my pleasure to be here with you. So before I get started, because I want to share a, a little bit about this NLP stuff. I know George has been sharing a, a few bits and pieces over the past day or so. Uh, and I'm going to guide you through probably one of my most favorite techniques in a little while. But you have received an interest card, an NLP interest card. And I hear that a few people have already filled that out. Fantastic. Very, very exciting. Um, the training that I'm doing coming up in Denver is coming up in July. So July 10th to the 16th. Throughout this, my presentation, if you go, yep, I think that NLP, I want to learn a little bit more about it. Fill out your interest card. And at some point in time, I'm going to say, go hand it to, to the people at the back or somebody, because something magical is going to happen today. So in the room, let me see, who are my NLPers that were with me last year? Woohoo! Excellent. Nice to see you, my NLP people. I see you up, up right and up in front, Ron. I don't know where else you would be. That's awesome. Awesome. To me, I think that, um, so I'm, this is, this is my training center here in, in Sydney. I'm on day two of our NLP practitioner training here in Sydney today. It starts in uh, about an hour. And it is, to me, the skills of NLP are just phenomenal. I had done my, completed my undergrad degrees in communica communication and psychology at UNC up in, in Greeley. And say a few more, a few more bears, go bears. And the, um, the, the thing with my psych degree is I didn't actually learn how to do much. I didn't learn how to help people. I didn't really even learn how to help myself. And through all my psych learning, my doctorates in clinical psychology, I think because I was between relationships and needed something to do or something like that. And I, I quite like learning. So I really snapped into this NLP tool because it's so, so user-friendly. And it helped me first and foremost, to be a better version of me, to get out of my own way, to release my blocks and limitations. I used to be really shy. I used to second guess myself. Even though inside there was this confident woman that wanted to appear, there was a little bit of a reserved Heidi as well. And I'm not quite sure why still, and that doesn't matter. What I've learned through NLP and what I hope even what you're gathering this weekend is that your mind is extremely powerful. Have you already, already learned that? Absolutely. And the, the thoughts, the reactions, the actions that you have, the behaviors you have, the beliefs you have, they drive your life. And NLP to me, my definition of NLP for me is understanding how the language of your mind creates the programs and patterns that you run in life. And when you can understand that, when you have the knowledge for you, for your life, you can understand how your patterns of emotions, behaviors, and beliefs get created. With John yesterday, you talked a lot about that money, money mindset, right? But what if you still have a block or a limit or I can't or mm, maybe or yeah, that sounds good, but what if? We want to address those blocks, those barriers, those interferences, as well as boost boost and build from resilience and confidence and strength and tapping into the resources that you've got. So NLP is very multifaceted. Ask, ask my graduates from last year, I'm sure you already have. And it's just a mind changing thing. It's kind of like a before and after kind of thing. You know, like if you're a parent is like before we had kids, after we had kids, before I got married, after I got married. And this is like before NLP, after NLP kind of thing. The, the mindset's fascinating. I was working with a, a gentleman not long ago because I'm a coach uh, as well. And I use the skills as a coach. We have a whole coach certification course as well. So even from that standpoint, if you're looking at utilizing NLP with others, phenomenal. But I had this gentleman that came to see me here in Sydney. And when he when I met him, he was like, down. You know, your, your body cannot not communicate. It was just, oh. And I said, what brings you here? And he said, well, I don't know. My life just kind of sucks. And I could tell that just by how he came in. And I said, so what have you done about this? And he started listing all these things that he'd done. 
And I learned that every year he chooses a different modality of some sort. If it's hypnotherapy or Reiki or massage or counseling or whatever it is. And he chooses another modality in hopes that something will work. And I said, okay, so this is just this year's plan. And he said, yeah. And I said, is it going to work? He goes, yeah. Do you think it's going to work based on that result? Yeah. No, me neither. And I said, okay, what do you need to know if it's going to work? He said, I just need a little bit of hope, a little bit of hope. Have you ever needed hope? You just need a little bit of hope. Because hope takes you a long way. Hope says there's a possibility. Hope says there's a possibility, but that's not enough. But that's exactly what I did with him that day. I didn't do anything other than just chat to him, figure out where he was at, and help him gain some hope. And I actually utilized the process that I'm going to share with you guys in a little while. And when he walked, when he finished the session, his shoulders were back, his head was upright, and he had this smile on his face. It was just a little smile. It wasn't like major transformation, but a little smile. And the next time I met him, he came in, he had a bigger smile. And I asked him, how was your week? And he said, it was magnificent. And I'm not even sure sure that that's a word that he had in his vocabulary before then. He had gotten out of the house. He had enjoyed his, his work. He was even thinking about buying a couch. And I said, well, hold on. What do you mean buying a couch? Because yeah, I, I just have a beanbag. Wow. And he was thinking about buying a couch because you know what he learned during that week, during the session, during this process that I'm going to do with you today is he was worth more than what he thought he was worth. He was worth more. What are you worth? What's your time worth? What's your energy worth? Because we only give what we get and we only get what we give. And the first and foremost is that, that whole, you know, put your, your own oxygen mask on first. That's that element of, of NLP is so let's first put our own oxygen mask on. Let's understand our own beliefs, our own behaviors, our own concepts, our own values. And let's make sure that we're living our life to the best that we can. That's what your greatest year of your life's all about. Living the best life that you possibly can. The uh, Carl Jung, Carl Jung, who's a, a psychologist, who was a psychologist. He probably is up there in, in somewhere land. Um, he has a wonderful saying that took me a little while to get my mind around, but that phrase, the saying is, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will control you and you will call it fate. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will control you and you will call it fate. So NLP is interested in your unconscious mind. That's your subconscious mind, non-conscious mind. I don't like that one, it makes me feel like I need to be passed out. But the, the unconscious, and that's the word that NLP primarily uses, that is that part of your mind as opposed to your conscious thinking analytical mind. Your unconscious mind is the one that's responsible for you. It's responsible for your beliefs, your behaviors, your habits, the chemical reactions. You know, when was the last time that you walked outside? Is it chilly today? When did you walk outside without your jacket? Do you have to go, body, I'm a bit cold, please produce some goosebumps. No, no. And if you leave your jacket on and you come into the room and you're sitting there for a while and you get a little bit hot and you start to glisten and glow, did you order that glistening? Did you say, body, I'm overheating. Please produce a little bit of sweat for me. No, it just happens. So it runs our body. It digests our food. It processes. It learns for us. Our unconscious mind is amazing. And this is the part of our mind that we tap into. Your conscious thinking analytical mind makes up 10, 10% of your mind, 10% of your mind. The other 90% is your unconscious mind. That's the part of our mind that we're, tr that we're tremendously interested in. I'm interested when I'm communicating with other people one-on-one, -on -one, what is it that you're doing that I can communicate with you in your way and when I'm working with somebody as a, as a coach, what is it that I can do to tap into your programs and help you shift and transform those? From the, the aspect of learning from ourselves and this, the, the wisdom transformation to be able to learn from even our older, wiser self. Because if you can think about something, you've done it already, at least on one realm. Because everything happens twice. 
first in our imagination, second in reality. First in our imagination, second in reality. You had to imagine being here right now. You had to imagine what it was going to be like to be on that, that top level floor of that hotel, being able to look out onto Colorado Boulevard. It might not have happened exactly like it was in your mind, but you did it once before you were there. And then you do it every day, thinking about something in the future. If you have a goal and aspiration, you can learn from your past, you can learn from your current, and you can learn from your future self. Isn't that neat? There was a, a TED Talk that I watched, and I really need to go back and watch my TED Talks again to figure out who this was. It was an author of a book. I, this is the, about as much information I can give to you about who it was. And she had something really profound to say. She said that when she got stuck and she needed advice, she sought the advice of two people her grandmother, and her firstborn child. What was really profound about that, because that in it itself is not so profound, what's profound about that is her grandmother passed away when she was seven, and she's yet to become a mother. So she seeks the guidance of somebody that has been here and somebody that's not yet here, because there's guidance and wisdom everywhere. I guess it's part of that law of attraction and the energy aspects and the belief systems that we all have. Quick question for you. Have you ever wondered or asked the question, why? Why do I do that? Why did I get into that situation? Why did I make that decision? Why didn't I do something? Have you ever asked yourself that why question? Yeah. You want to know the answer? Short or long? <laughs> I'll give you short first. Short, here's a very short answer. Why do you do what you do? Because. Because. That's the real answer. The longer answer is because you've got patterns, programs upholding it. You have a belief that that was the right thing. You have a habit that that was the right thing. You have a behavior system that that was the right thing. It upholds some sort of value system. So if what you're doing isn't getting you to where you want to go, we need to figure out how to change the unconscious patterns. It could be as easy as it, yeah, just do something else. But my guess, because I've worked with thousands of people throughout the world in coaching sessions and in trainings, is that if you just go, yeah, I'll do something else. You might do something else for like a week. That, that would be like the new gym membership. And then life happens because that rote learning doesn't actually do much. It's changing it at that unconscious level. It's creating a new neurological condition, a new neural pathway. And that's what we wanna do with the neuro-linguistic programming is to create new neurological pathways to enhance what's working, change what's not working and, and create new patterns, emotions, beliefs, and systems within you. So I would love to guide you through a process. This process was developed by a gentleman named Robert McDonald. He and Robert Dilt were my first trainers back in about 1997. And it is one of the most beautiful processes because it, it taps into your unconscious mind, higher conscious mind, and you, you in a beautiful, beautiful way. So I want to spend probably about 10 or 15 minutes in this process with you. Would that be okay if I guide you through this process? Perfect. So I'm gonna ask you to do two things. One is to think about something that, where you want a bit of wisdom, where some guidance and some wisdom and some, some aha uh -huh kind of space would be useful for you, the technical term. And as you think about that, I'd also like you to put your stuff on the floor so that it's out of your way now I see that you've got rolly chairs. So this is gonna be an interesting one because in a little while, I'm going to actually have you stand up, turn around and sit back down in your chair. So try and make your space, you, you'll be able to open your eyes if you wanna do that, uh, make sure you're safe, but make sure you have that space. In fact, why don't you give that a quick go just to make sure physically you can. Stand up, turn around, sit back down. Just, it's more of a floor thing. Than, Look at that. <laughs> See, from even like, you know, 12,000 miles away, I can get you to do weird things. The power of NLP, power of NLP. Okay, so I would love you to close your eyes for me. Go ahead and close your eyes. 
Take a couple breaths. And I want you to think about this space in your life that you'd like a bit more clarity, a bit more enlightenment, some more wisdom, some more ha ah. And just start to notice that. And notice it not just with your mind, but notice it with your body. Notice what you feel, what sensations come up, what emotions come up, if any. But notice your body sensations. They've identified that we store emotions inside of our body. So what you feel when you feel an emotion, when you feel any feeling, is amino acids called neuropeptides in your body. So that's why we ask sometimes, where do you feel something? I just want you to notice that. And as you think about this, this situation, this thing that you want a bit more clarity or wisdom or enlightenment or understanding about, I want you to imagine that there is a chair in front of you and somebody sitting in that chair. And that somebody that's sitting in that chair is old, old, old. It's like near death, but not dying and wise, wise, so wise. And I want you to connect with this person's heart, with this person's mind, with this person's gut. And look in their eyes, even if you can't really see them, look in their eyes. And recognize those eyes, that soul, that spirit, that energy as your own. Connect with your older, wiser self. This is a you that has been there. This is a you that's already done it. This is a you that has achieved your dreams and more even the dreams that you don't know exist yet. This is the you that can give you wisdom, can give you guidance, can give you a path. And for a moment, just be there, connect, at the heart level, at the mind level, at the spirit level, at the gut level. And just be in awe of being there, of your older, wiser self being there. In a moment, I'm going to have you stand up, turn around, and you'll be sitting back in your chair. But as you sit in your chair, in your mind, in your body, I want you to sit in them. So when you stand and sit, sit in their posture. Notice how their head is. Notice how their shoulders are, or should I say yours? So when you're ready, if you want to, you can open your eyes. If you want to keep your eyes closed, you can. But when you're ready, stand up, turn around, and sit back down into your older, wiser self. Notice your posture shifting, your breathing shifting. And notice that heart connection that you have as you look across at that younger you. Notice the love, the admiration you have for that younger you, that neophyte. 
they have yet to tap into all of their potential. There's dreams that they're yet to have. And from your heart as the older, wiser, sage self, start to share. Share wisdom, energy, growth, understanding. It might just be through energy. It might be through that transmission from heart to heart or mind to mind or gut to gut or spirit to spirit. There might be words that flow through your mind, but share. Begin to share at an unconscious or conscious level what there is to know, the guidance, the wisdom, the understanding. Because as the older, wiser self, you've been there. You've done it. Even those things that your younger self hasn't, haven't even thought about. Notice that. And just spend a moment here in that energy space with your older, wiser self. Transmitting. Sharing. Wisdom. Keys. Knowledge. Love. Share with your younger self how 2019 became the best year of life to date. And how from this moment you've grown, that it spreads its wings into the rest of life too. Feel it, really feel it. Feel that love you have for that younger self. I see some tears. I even feel the emotions through the miles. And when you're ready, I'm going to ask you to stand up again and turn again and this time you'll be sitting back down into you, January 2019. When you're ready, stand again. Turn. And sit back down into you. And as you sit back down into you, feel that connection, feel that, that love that comes into you from that older self. Feel the wisdom, understand what it means in your life to have met your older, wiser self. Understand, get into your mind and your body and your awareness, that muscle connection, that memory, that neurology of been there, done that, I've got the learnings. Allow your older selves knowledge and wisdom and love to permeate, to cascade, to coalesce into you now. Feel that be there. Breathe. Connect. And then from your heart to their heart, from your eyes to theirs, thank them. If you want to reach out and hug them and embrace them, you can do that too. But thank them for being there, for sharing, for helping you grow. And know that anytime you need this older, wiser sage in your life, you're there. And you're there too. Each 
of both of you are always there. And allow your unconscious mind, that your non-thinking part of your mind, to store any additional learnings and understandings. And then when you're ready, allow yourself to come back into the room and open your eyes. Deep breath, deep breath. For a moment of debrief, can you turn to the person next to you and, and just give them an, an idea of your experience and, and kindly with heart, listen to theirs. Take two minutes, two minutes. All right, come on back to me. Isn't that a beautiful process? And that was one of my first introductions to NLP. And from that moment, I learned that I needed to learn more of that stuff because if I could get such a, a, a visceral reaction, I had tears. How many of you had some tears or some emotions coming up? Yeah, and it's so powerful. Now, that aspect of your older, wiser self, you are always there with you. From the moment you were born, you had this other little angel you looking at you. That's my belief. And you still have that. And you can tap into that self anytime because there's, there's one thing that we, we believe in NLP and it's that you have all the resources that you need to achieve your desired outcomes. And part of what we do with NLP is we help you to find those resources and help you to have tools to continue to find them along your journey. You know, I've been involved in NLP now, this is my 22nd year. And I'm still finding those gems. I'm not perfect and I don't aim to be perfect. I just aim to have my best moment every moment. And if I fall short of that, I look at it and go, what do I need to do to improve that? What do I need to do to be better? And you know what? Sometimes my best moment in that moment is a pajama 